Hey guys, I'm Michael Greck. I'm an assistant editor at a small production company in Reality TV, and today I'm going to show you how to utilize a script I wrote that replicates the supergrouper on PCs. This will allow you to automate the multigrouping process using a program called AutoHotKey. Now, I'm no programmer. If I can do it, so can you, but since I have it, I figured I'd share it. In this tutorial, I'll go through downloading and installing AutoHotKey, and I'll explain my script alongside the actual functions in Avid. This way, you'll be better prepared to troubleshoot potential problems or edit the script to better suit your needs. First, to give credit where it's due, I want to give a shout out to Will Blank's YouTube tutorial, How to Multigroup in Avid, the Ultimate Tutorial. This is the tutorial I use to learn how to multigroup. It's great, it's informative, it's 20 minutes and well worth it. He goes through the whole process from sync mapping to multigrouping manually to automating it. That's all more detail than I plan to go into, so I highly recommend you watch it. It's in many ways, um, it's, uh, this is merely a product of that. Now, I don't know if he invented, quote unquote, uh, this technique, but I happen to use his tutorial to learn, so I'm just giving credit where it's due. Speaking of which, in this tutorial, he references and demonstrates quick keys, or more specifically, the super grouper, which is a set list of commands used in quick keys to automate the mundane and repetitive part of multigrouping. So that's my second shout out to Noah and his super grouper. It's been very helpful to me, and I'm sure to ease everywhere. And my script is just a converted copy of his work that's compatible for PCs. Literally, I downloaded a free trial of Quickies on a Mac, opened the supergrouper commands, and replicated it step by step. So, thank you, Noah. <clears throat> when I heard of the supergrouper and saw it in action, I got super excited. And I got a little less excited when I learned Quickies is a Mac exclusive. Now, at work, we do have a couple of Macs, but I largely work on PCs, so... I went searching for an alternative, and that's when I found out about AutoHotKey, a free macros program for PCs. Yes, the good news is that it's free. The bad news, there's really no user interface. You just type up a script and execute it. So with that, let's start from the beginning. And uh, full disclosure, you do not need AutoHotKey to run the script. I have compiled it. So if you download it, you just double click it and you're up and running, good to go. There are two compiled scripts, one if you have a functioning numpad and another if you don't, named accordingly. Um, but if you download the full program, you'll be able to edit mine and or create your own scripts, which can be really powerful. I'll supply a download link in the description. So, AutoHotKey. First you want to go to www.autohotkey.com, and that's singular. You'll come to this page. Click this green button for download, then click the blue button here for the installer. Just save it to desktop or whatever. Then it'll pop up with the dialog. Okay, so I'm running Windows 7. It's a 64-bit uh, professional version. If you're doing something else, you can go into the custom installation, but um, you know, Express works here. And boom, there you go, it's complete. You have four buttons here in this dialog. View changes and new features, self-explanatory. You view the tutorial, not much of a tutorial. It's just a help doc. Uh, I kind of fumbled through this and through forum searches, kind of figure out how to use this thing. So if you want to kind of explore, you know, go ahead. But that's all that is. Run out of hotkey. Also, not that helpful. Why am I seeing this? You ran out of hotkey without telling it which script file to run. So this is what I mean by not much of a user interface. Um, if you don't have a script written up already, you know, like something you do in kind of looks like Notepad, um, auto hotkey isn't going to do anything. So um, yeah, so we can just exit for here for now. So we'll exit there. Exit this. And now we have to make sure a few things are set up in Avid. Uh, this is all explained in Blank's tutorial, but uh, I'm just going to go through a quick checklist here. So we're going to want to make sure that we're using our multi-grouping keyboard setup. That's important. 
go to composer settings okay stop at head frames check phantom marks check all right in our multi-grouping bin here mark in auxiliary time code one columns important and in this order is important the sync map needs to be the bottom item in your bin very important um, and you'll see why but this is a very important thing so make sure it is the bottom item in your bin I usually just like to create a whole new work bin just to kind of deal with this process um, just make sure it's at the bottom okay and then um, down here you just want to make sure that <clears throat> the track you're working on is soloed, control click to do that. Um, I've had issues, I'm pretty sure I've had issues in the past where when I just had it on its normal monitor mode like this, I was something was weird was going on. So just make sure that's control selected to um, avoid that. Alright, now let's look at the script. I'm gonna drag these guys over okay so <clears throat> these green guys are the compiled files that you can download and run you double click one of these guys and it's up and running you can see down here um, the script is running now in auto hotkey right when we tried to open it up before the program it said you know what file you're trying to use well why am I seeing this when you have a script you can double click it it starts running in the background and you're good to go. The commands and instructions in the script that were programmed, written in the script will now override your keyboard given that the right conditions are meant. So, um, you know, and at some point you may not want that to happen anymore. So to exit out of it, you can go here, right click and uh, exit, or maybe it pops up in this guy and right click and exit to get out of it. Um, but you can't edit these guys. When you're working on a script, which you can, once you have AutoHockey installed, you can access by right-clicking somewhere on the desktop, going to New, and you'll have this feature now, AutoHockey Script. It'll create a script that you can start, um, you know, messing around with editing and, and writing on your own. Uh, these are the ones that I was working on, and these are editable. They were compiled into these guys, but to show you visually what's going on in the text, um, on the text level, I'll be editing these guys. So if you right click on, if I right click on this and go to edit script, this will open it up and then you can see um, what's going on in here. So move these guys out of the way. And this is the numpad version, FYI. Okay. So uh, I'm going to go through each step here and kind of show what's going on in Avid, you know, step by step. If you think you can just look at this and figure it out, um, you probably don't need to watch the rest of this tutorial, but uh, I am going to go through, because there are a couple, there are a couple things, especially this kind of, this line right here uh, is a little finicky, so you might want to stick around for that, but I'll go through these line by line. So, multi-grouping, the title, and this semicolon here just is just telling the script to ignore the rest of the line it's just acting as a comment so the script is not looking at at these guys the escape key right here this exits the app this is important um, this program can be finicky uh, it's not you know specifically constrained to a specific program like avid or something it's just sending out um, inputs from your um, keyboard so if some other window is selected or whatever it can start getting kind of crazy and it, it, even to the extent where you might not be able to go down here and right click and exit so um, escape is very important and just note if you're using the no numpad version you're actually gonna have to use shift and escape if I can bring it up here this no numpad version this plus sign means shift so shift and escape will exit the app in this version and it's just important because in the no numpad version the escape key actually plays a role in the script doing its thing so if you want to escape you're going to have to do shift and escape um, and I have some of those relics or remnants of that over here alright then you have pound if when active so if the following window is active this program 
will begin. This is the condi this is a condition. It's not a constraint. Um, so Avid Media Composer. This program spelled out exactly this way. Um, this is the program name. So if this window is active, if this window is active, then you're going to be able to do the rest of this. Shift M will start the script. So M for multi group, Shift M. And what's going to happen is this input box is going to come up with a. It's going to ask you how many times you want to loop this thing. And that is going to be equivalent to the amount of cuts that you've made here in your sync map. Um, just to demonstrate if I get this guy going, select Avid and then Shift M, this dialog pops up and um, <clears throat> you can type in, so in our case 5, then hit go and it should work. But I'm going to show you what's actually going to happen here and this is where it gets really screwy. Oh no, what? Okay, you can't see my other screen but it's like trying to do stuff so let me escape out of it. Let me escape out of it. Okay, so it did not do anything in Avid. It started going to Windows Explorer and um, messing with stuff. Um, <clears throat> so that's where this right here becomes very important. The sleep 1000. When when you get into this inbox or this um, dialog box, uh, this guy, I think this this must just be a Windows Explorer, you know, window. So when you say get the keyboard to spit out all of this the script however many times hit OK it stays in Windows Explorer it does not switch over to Avid um, so you know it's not gonna work so that's where this sleep uh, command comes in handy the sleep command is a kind of like a pause command it tells the script to pause for this amount of time 1000 is one second so it after you type in the repetition count and hit enter it's gonna pause for a second in that one second you need to click avid and this timeline your timeline window to get avid active again and to get the timeline window active again so all the shortcuts all the keyboard strokes you're sending out are going to be shortcuts that work in this timeline so that's very important. You can alter it to however long you want if you think it takes longer than a second for you to find Avid and click on this guy. Um, but that is an important step. Um, everything else you can probably figure out, but that's why that's there. And you need to make sure you manually select this timeline again for when you start doing the rest of it. Um, okay, so let's start going through some of the stuff. After that, once you select this, you type in your repetition count. It'll then send the keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 with our multi grouping keyboard setup. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Boom. Now your <clears throat> bin is active with this subclip, and you are in the name field of this subclip. It's then going to send the tab key it's going to move over to the mark in column. This is why it's important that the mark in comes before auxiliary time code right after name because there's there's a process here. And after tab, it's going to do shift enter. This sends your cursor up one row. But, you know, in the bin it loops. So it goes from the top row, which is where your subclip um, is created, it goes from the top and loops all the way to the bottom to where your sync map mark in field is. That's why it's important that the sync map's on the bottom. It's gonna go here, it's gonna do control C for copy. It's gonna tab over, and then it's going to return. Now return is gonna send it down a row, which is now gonna flip up to the top, which goes back to that subclip you made into the auxiliary timecode field. Uh, and once you're in here, it's gonna control V and paste this info in here. <clears throat> um, as you can see now in this script, what's going to happen is it's going to skip these guys because they're just leftover comments, and then it's going to hit the numpad enter. And that's going to get you out of the field here and kind of get you, instead of being in, in the sort of 
input in a field mode it's going to take you out kind of to this bin mode and once you're there it'll hit control zero and that's the shortcut to get back to the timeline right and now that you're here it'll hit seven and you're on to the next clip and so you're going to repeat this for um, each track now the reason why there there are two versions there's the numpad version and no numpad version is let me see if I can get uh, another guy here six um, I'm just gonna do this manually for a minute so let's say I'm here right I just control V and pasted the info here if you hit uh, and if you hit the enter key it's gonna go down to this row and you're inputting here now you hit control zero it just adds a zero here it's not recognizing the control zero shortcut to move into the timeline because you're still in this input field you're not in the overall uh, work bin space so in the when you don't have a numpad instead what happens is it goes it tabs over to wherever and then hits escape and that escape key essentially works the same as the enter key in the numpad so that's why you can't use escape in that version to get out of the program um, so that's just that little ca caveat there um, so let's see this script in action so you can see what happens and so I can prove to you that it actually works after all this <clears throat> so we've got this selected we've got our track selected here one two three four five I'm going to double click on um, my numpad compiled script so you can see it's active here now go here shift M hit 5 OK click in here and now it goes ahead and automates this um, you can you know when you're going through this you can automate it to your liking I have the sleep function set for 250 which is a quarter of a second just because you know if I had issues earlier on with my computer and it was kind of running a little slowly when I would when I had a, a shorter time frame it would send out keystrokes before the computer had finished I don't know dealing with the previous um, action and it would essentially skip that step and then throw everything off and it would all get um, go kind of wacko all right so now let's work on this guy. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine here. Okay. Nine, go. You can see it's going through these blank spots as well and uh, you just delete those once you get through this. If you think your computer can handle this quicker, you can certainly speed it up, you know, you might be able to get through this a lot faster than what I have it set up for. Okay. All right, so that is the script, and it went through everything, and we have these guys. Just delete these um, sub sequences they're not going to be helpful to us but now you select all of your sub clips here you go to where is it clip multi-group um, if you have a different version of avid it might be i think in bin instead if you have an older version um, anyways you hit multi-group you're going to want auxiliary time code you hit ok it doesn't matter if you if you hit group I think every time you do this then it asks you so you can do group always and bam this is your multi-group just tab over to it and there you go so now you can see your footage is all synced up and this script is uh, sort of a super grouper compatible version for PCs uh, and also, last little tip, you know, once you're done with this, make sure you exit ahead of auto hotkey. Sometimes, let's say maybe you're trying to name something here, like if I wanted to start saying, oh, let's call this, um, I, 
I don't know, let's call it like split cam. Um, let's say I want to call like split cam multigroup underscore multigroup01, whatever. If I hit shift M here, it brings this up, right? So um, make sure you exit out of this because that's kind of annoying. And uh, yeah, so I hope that this has been helpful. Um, you know, uh, good luck multigrouping. And uh, this is Michael Grech signing off.